Hello and welcome to the latest video and podcast from Fantasy Football Scout as we look ahead to game week 34. My name is Joe and today I'm joined by Fantasy Football Scout's deputy editor Tom Freeman to reveal our teams ahead of the weekend's matches. Welcome Tom, how are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks, Joe. Yeah, um, looking forward to double game week 34. A um, couple of free transfers, I think, like yourself, Joe. Yeah, two free transfers. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're neither of us are free hitting, no. but um, we're pretty stacked with doublers already. So yeah. it's just kind of fine tuning a couple of areas and then freshening both of our squads up the following week. Yeah, definitely. We're both going to wild card in 35. Uh, we're both not free hitting 34. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just have a quick look at the fixtures just to, to remind ourselves what we're dealing with. Um, then Tom's going to reveal his uh, bus team uh, ahead of 34. I'll do the same as well. I've also uh, uh, started to think about game week 35 because I already know pretty much what I'm doing in 34. So I haven't put too much thought into it because I just know what I'm doing. And that's it um 35 is a bit more tricky so uh i think it's good to start thinking about that now rather than just getting the wild card and then yeah. sort of oh who should i have and sort of panic buys and i'm trying to plan it a bit better um, um just before we move on to the fixtures do my uh, reminder do press that like button it helps us out and uh, do remember to um uh, subscribe uh, wherever you're uh, watching uh, this or wherever, wherever you're listening to this rather sorry i should say because we know you're watching on youtube um, so do remember to subscribe Okay, I've got the fixtures up on the screen here. Um, and this shows a couple of things. It shows who's doubling in 35 and 37 and 34, which is a main interest. So lots and lots of extra fixtures here. It shows that Tottenham are blanking 34. It shows that overall, taking everything into account, Newcastle have the have the best fixtures. They've got the easiest ones. They've got Crystal Palace, Sheffield United, Burnley, Brighton, Manchester United and Brentford. It's an easy run. For them, uh, they are top, but no doubles. Chelsea have two doubles though. Arsenal and Aston Villa and Tottenham. So it's tricky, but it's a double in 35. West Ham, Nottingham Forest, Brighton and Bournemouth to finish off uh, for them in 38. Uh, Manchester United, Crystal Palace, Man City, Everton, uh, Sheffield United and Arsenal, amongst others with good fixtures. Meanwhile, lower down, West Ham, they're ones to avoid. Same with Fulham, poor fixtures. They've got City and Liverpool, both of them in that run. Aston Villa as well have still slipped down. We knew this was coming. They had a good run. But Ollie Watkins can't stop scoring. And Aston Villa looking pretty good. They're putting um, a good a good stab at uh, being a top four side at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, meanwhile, Tottenham have a, have a pretty poor run, but they've got lots of doubles. So they've got a blank, then Arsenal-Chelsea double, Liverpool-Burnley double, and then City... Sorry, Liverpool with 36, then Burnley, Man City, 37. But they do finish the season away at Sheffield United, uh, which could be good. But it also could be good for Sheffield United. They could be down and out. Well, they will be by then. And so they yeah. might want to um, show their fans, uh, show their away, their travelling fans. No, hang on, Tottenham away there. They want to show their home fans um, uh, just how good they can be in the Championship next year. Um, so, yeah, taking all that into account, what does this sort of show to you for 35, 35 and beyond, I guess, for your, for your team. Yeah. Well, I think with the, the wild card planned, I think you're going to obviously um, the immediate focus is, is Chelsea and Tottenham and the Tottenham fixtures are really mixed. Like you just said then Joe, but they have got that Burnley game at home. They have got Sheffield United away. And I know, I know they were really flat at the weekend Spurs, but generally you expect them to score in most games. Um, so, I think we'll definitely be looking to to add another attacker to Son in in 35, um, and then uh, you know you're going to complement them with you know Isak or Gordon, aren't you? Those Newcastle yeah. fixtures are absolutely brilliant from yeah. 35, aren't they? Yeah. Sheffield United, Burnley, and then a yeah. double game week. It doesn't get much better than that. Mm -hmm. So, do you go with one Newcastle striker? Do you try and get Gordon yeah. and Isak into your draft? and make a compromise mm. somewhere else. I think that's a really viable tactic to do. Yeah. Um, and do we trust, how, how how much do we trust United? How far mm. do we want to go with United? Yeah. Um, can you can you trust an Arna or something like that, given mm. what we're seeing on the, the pitch at the moment? Yeah. I don't think you can at the moment, no. but you've got that, that get double game where you've got Burnley mm. at home, you've got fixtures where they might, might get a clean sheet. Mm. Um, 
But of course, the immediate focus for us is that double game week 34, isn't Indeed. it? And um, that's what we're, we're looking at now. Indeed. Um, uh, yeah, with Newcastle, I, I think I may have said that they haven't got a double game week. They, of course, do have a double game week. Yeah. They are top of the season ticker, um, it, which includes a double game week in 37 with Brighton and Manchester United. Um, it, uh, Dubravka ordinarily would be on my um, in my team. Uh, I might get a bit more from Shah, uh, I think, uh, for goal threat. Yes. But... Um, it's the worry about Pope coming back soon. And, and so if you're wild carding in 35 and Pope comes back in 37, then there's the Dubravka, like me with my Kelleher dream, that's that's ended. Yes. So that's annoying um, because Dubravka would be a really cut price way of getting in there. But yeah, we, it's difficult. I mean, do you, do you know what the latest is with Pope? I mean, I know he's coming back at some point. No, that, that had been penciled in and then... T- a fake bit of news dropped about a week or so, or maybe a couple of weeks ago, saying Pope was out for the season, and then that was quashed pretty quickly. Yeah. And so we need. It would be nice to get an update on that yeah. prior to us wild carding. Um, but there are plenty of options at Newcastle. I yeah. mean, you've got Dan Byrne, haven't you? Is a cheaper yeah. option than Share. Yeah. Trippier might be back if you want to go for something a bit yeah. different. If you've got a bit more money to spend, so. Um, so yeah, the, the, there is options there, and I think I would be more inclined to maybe go for double attack if you want three Newcastle. Yeah. I think Isak Gordon and a defender would make the most sense. Yeah, I mean, well, I'll look at my wild card team, but uh, Isak Gordon and and a defender are definitely my yeah. thoughts um, there. Um, okay, well, let's have a look at your bus team for game week thirty four. Do you want to run through mm-hmm. that and what your decisions yeah. are? And remind us, you've got two free transfers and you've got some money in the yeah. bank. Yeah, so I've got two free transfers and 0.3 million in the bank. So yeah. not not a lot, not a lot. Mm-hmm. But when you hear about the moves I'm considering, I think I'm all right for money. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I've got a 4-3-3 formation. Um, I've got Pickford in goal. I've got Ben White, Gabriel, Van Dijk and Zabanye at the back. Mm-hmm. I've got Salah, Saka and Sarabia in midfield. And then I've got Semenyo, who is currently flagged, mm. uh, Solanke and Haaland up front. Mm-hmm. And then on the bench, Ariola, Palmer, Taylor and Son. Okay. Um, my initial thought prior to the weekend's games, and I think I might have mentioned it last week, was to do Son and Haaland to Eze and Darwin. That right. was like a week, two weeks ago. Yeah. That was the rough yeah. idea. I think there are better opportunities mm. now. And... Um, my current thought, or at least the thing I'm thinking at the moment, is to sell Son and Palmer, yeah, um, and and bring in two new midfielders, okay. uh, Eze, Olise, and Diaz are the three on the shortlist at okay. the moment to bring in two of those. Um, they will both come into the mm. starting eleven, and then Zabanye and Semenyo will drop out of that, and yeah. I'd still play Harlan. So I'd basically be going with ten double game week players. Yeah. If some if Semenyo is fit, and my understanding is it's not a serious injury, mm-hmm. I'd then be faced with a decision to play him or Haaland, yeah. um, which kind of kind of sounds crazy. But he has got the two fixtures. Mm-hmm. We just need a bit of a fitness update on that. Really, the the drawback with me doing that, and I think a lot of people are in this position this week, is you want to create a midfield space, but you sell Palmer. Now I bought Palmer at five point three million. Ah. He's now gone up. He's now gone up to six point one million, mm-hmm. and I'd want him back immediately. Now I don't think. Most at this stage of the season you need to be getting too concerned about that but it's just that's quite a big leap and I just mean to make sure I'm not I mean when you've been building your wild card I'll ask you in a bit mm. Joe how tight it is for funds and stuff like that um because it is you know you, you're going to lose a little bit by selling Palmer but it just it creates that space and I do like the idea of one I've only got two Liverpool mm. players in so it seems a bit counterproductive going in with only two when they got a double game week with yeah. Fulham and Everton. So, and I do prefer Diaz mm. over um, Darwin. And if I really wanted to take, you know, if Jota just got limited minutes off the mm. bench, you could even roll the dice with him and say, mm. oh, you might get one start in the double and then minutes off the bench and the other, I'll go with him. So I like that midfield spot for a Liverpool player. And I like, I, I want to mm. get Eze or Elise in as well. Mm. So it just kind of works better for my team selling Palmer, I think. I think um, I mean for 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 my team it's a little different um various things I've I've already got Darwin so I can't I haven't got really yeah. the options to get Diaz I could do but 
I'd have to juggle around a bit. Doesn't make sense. Um, yeah. So for me, Palmer, I, I was just having a look on my own page as well. 5.3, indeed, I bought him for as well. He's 6.1. So if I, I yeah. my selling price would be 5.7. I want him back. He's Bearing in mind, he's going to go up in price in th- by yeah. 35. So I'm, I'm looking at having to spend half a million more. So for me, he's a keep because yeah. that's half a million. And, and I'm not usually that bothered about money and obviously i'm not going to make early moves because of money at this stage but this is where the money counts and um mm. that half a million will go a long way on a wild card definitely yeah i think what i what i think what i need to do is go and maybe just give a i'm gonna have a look at your draft in a minute mm. for 35 go and put down a wild card 35 yeah. idea for myself because money is going to be tired because we're both yeah. bench boosting, of course. So your squad, you yeah. can't have any bench. Everybody needs to be a valued member. Yeah, Every, Everybody's going to cost a bit more. We ain't got any 4 million pound yeah. players so, on. So that, we're going to get so, 35 and 36. We're going to have huge bench points. And then when we, yeah, yeah. in order to, the paradox is in order to get a bench boost 37, which very very probably won't score as much as our bench 35 no. and 36 no, no. so it makes me think <laughs> maybe we should use it then um that's why yeah. i think uh, i would prefer in an ideal world i would prefer to have used my bench boost this week get it out of the way and yeah I think yeah I get, players. yeah i get that and um so that's a consider that's the consideration yeah. for my team i could do another alternative would be to do son and Semenyo mm. and then just move them to like an Eze or an Elise and then bring Cunha in or something like yeah. that. Wolves yeah. have got Ar- like that. Arsenal and Bournemouth, both at Molyneux. Mm. You get to keep Palmer as your first sub. Mm. He's then in place. You haven't got to go and spend 0.5 more on him the week after. Um, so yeah, th- those are the kind of like the key decisions, but I will absolutely be going in with 10 or 11 double game week players this yeah. week and then wild card out of it, bench boost 37. I think it's a strong position to be in. I think those free hitting uh, will have a lot of similar players. They will have various differences. Um, yeah. But, but um, it, it's not going to be that drastically different. I think they're all going to have Solanke. I think that some of them might not have Haaland, uh, but they might have Kuna no. instead. I think they're all going to have Salah and Saka. They're going to have an Arsenal defender. Um, they might, I suppose the players you might be missing on like Havertz, um, Diaz, yeah. if you don't go for him. It's those sorts of players. But if you're already thinking about getting Eze and Elise, um, mm. then uh, I think, I mean, uh, I think that ideal f- midfield five would be Diaz, Salah, Saka, Elise and Eze, I think, for me. But you could probably yeah, put Havertz in the mix there, but we've only got five slots. Um, yeah, no, no, I'd agree with that. Yeah, so um, it it feels like the people who aren't, free hit and we really need Arsenal clean sheet in one of those two fixtures yeah. to help us double defence owners yeah. because then I think it's going to be quite difficult for a lot of the free hit teams yeah. to get 10, 15, 20 points ahead of the ones that don't which are well yeah. set up so that feels kind of key in the whole debate yeah. about if it's going to be a success or not. Okay uh, here's my team so I've still got my plan, I've, I've altered it slightly so I've got Game week 34, I've got Kelleher, I've got Son, um, who's not playing. And so for me, the obvious move to do, and something I touted last week if Kelleher wasn't playing, Kelleher to Alisson, it gives me Liverpool defensive coverage, and Eze is my top target that I don't own in midfield, uh, Son to Eze. And that would leave me with something like 2.6 in the bank. I'll go through my team. I have the option of taking a hit if I wanted to, but I'm not sure I'd do. Um, I'm going to wild card in 35, bench boost in 37, and game at 38. As ever, I'm going to finish and have a cup of tea. So I've got a 3-4-3 three, three at the moment. I've got Kelleher in goal. He will become Alisson. I've got Gabriel Anderson in Crystal Palace, who I've kept all this time, just for this moment. Yeah. And then last week, he got eight points on my bench. So <laughs> if he can get more than eight points, I'll be happy. Uh, I've got Ben White as well. Um, I've got Son. He's going to become Eze. Salah currently got the armband, captain. Saka, the vice captain. And I'm playing Garnacho as one of two single game week players. He's at home to Sheffield United. I could take a hit to get Elise in. Um, but it's minus four. And if Garnacho had a tough away game, then I would definitely consider that. But he's at home to Sheffield United. I'll take that. 
Um, I've got Haaland as my my other single game weaker. He's away to Brighton. Um, and I've got Solanke and Darwin Nunes as well. On my bench, I've got Ariola, who's not playing, hence me having to get a replacement for Kelleher. Um, and I've got Palmer as my first sub. So if Haaland doesn't show up, I've got Palmer, who scored four goals last time out. Uh, again. And um, yeah, a, a reluctant benching, but I am playing double uh, Arsenal defence against him. I do think if if he's ever not going to score, it's going to be this game. Yeah. I've got Zabarnier as my first defensive sub, so he's my second sub, but um, which is which is good. I could play him instead of Garnacho, but I just don't think I'm going to. I think oh, Garnacho yeah. could get two points, and Zabarnier could get four points tops. So I think Garnacho's floor is two points. The ceiling could be anything. It could be sixteen, seventeen. Yeah. With Zabarnier, I might get eight points from him. Probably four though. Um, and I've also still got wow. Alfie Doughty, who's last on my bench. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not even sure if Zabania will get four because you could see him conceding a yeah. couple of goals in at yeah. least maybe even both of those fixtures. Yeah, so exactly. I, I I agree with that. Yeah. So. so I'm going in in with nine double game weekers using my two free transfers, uh, and I'm pretty happy with all of them. And I'm quite happy. I think Garnacho will be a bit of a point of difference. So if Garnacho does well, that's that's one over the free hitters. And I think the same with with Haaland as well. Uh, many. Yeah, and um, and Anderson as well. I think he's quite a nice pick. Yeah, I don't yeah. think many. I think people. One, I don't think many people will go for a Palace um, defender. They yeah. might go for Henderson. Yeah. I, some people might go for Munoz, but I think that Anderson. I think against yeah. West Ham, given that they're in Europa League action yeah. on Thursday. Bowen's out at the moment. I think he's a nice pick. So. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. I've sort of been planning with, for this. Um, it's not ideal, but it's pretty good. I'm fairly happy with this. Yeah. Um, so while at the yeah. moment it looks like I've got a few single games, Son will be out for his sake, and Alisson will be in there for Kelleher. I like playing Alisson this week. I think um, he'll be quite strong. Um, yeah. Because even if they concede, at least I get those save points, um, which could be better than... Uh, the defenders. Um, so as I said, I'm not really dwelling on this because I've sort of decided my moves. I already knew if, if Kelleher was out, I would I would face a decision, Alisson and Eze, or I could get Pickford or Henderson and not get Eze and get Diaz instead. But I, I just prefer the Eze-Alisson combination uh, uh, over someone like Pickford or Henderson, yeah. I think. Uh, I think I prefer that. But oh, OK, so I've uh, got a bit of time. So I'm going to put so I have been thinking a bit, a bit more <laughs> about Gaming 35 when I'm wildcarding. So I put, put together a few drafts. So this is one of them. Well, there's a whole bunch. I'll read it. I'll read it out in a sec. But one of, of the, the key problems are, do you have Salah or not? And if you don't, you probably haven't got any Liverpool coverage for the rest of the season. It's only, you know, three game weeks. Um, one of them's a double, but it's no, four game weeks. But four game weeks, it's, yeah, yeah. It, it, that's that's a gamble. Um, also, you're building for a bench boost. Your team's going to be really good, so yeah. <laughs> you're going to have really big bench points. And um, yeah, and it looks weird, <laughs> but but you know, you've, in a way, you you constructed the team too good. But that's too good on paper. Whether that actually achieves it. So that's tricky. Yeah. Also, with with um, Spurs and Chelsea, it's like I want coverage for them, but they're not. It's not the best double for them. With Chelsea facing Aston Villa and Tottenham, and then Spurs have got Arsenal and Chelsea, so um, I, it's not ideal. But anyway, so I've I've run through through this, and I've got some money in the bank. So I've got I've gone for Vicario in goal. I think for a double game week uh, bench boost. 37. I'm happy with Vicario. I've also got Anana as my other goalkeeper on the bench. Uh, he uh, Anana, I could play here. He's got he's even better than Vicario, he, even with a single. He's got home to Burnley. Uh, in a 3 4 3, I've got Cher, who's 5.6 for Newcastle. Gabriel, I'm keeping and playing. Um, Gusto, uh, uh, for only 4.3. Happy with him. Petrovic's consideration. I just don't know whether Sanchez is going to get any minutes or not. If I don't mm. think Sanchez is going to get any minutes, I'll go for Petrovic instead. Yeah, he's injured at the moment, so yeah. um, Sanchez. So and and look, they kept a clean sheet last night. It yeah. Seems strange to drop him now, but it depends what happens at the Arsenal game, doesn't it? Yeah, so. he could get um, Sanchez could just get another run out, 
And, you know, he could mm-hmm. get one of the games. If he's fit and ready, he could just get one of those games mm-hmm. with a tight turnaround in 37. Um, yeah. So, of course, my, I've, got, um, I've gone for Son, Bern- uh, Fernandez, Palmer, who's my captain, obviously. Uh, and I've also gone for Gordon, Sheffield United at home for him. I've got Haaland up front, Isaac and Nicholas Jackson, Nick Jackson there. Um, on my bench, I've got Anana at home to Brentford. Phil Foden, Gvardiol, and Van Heck at, at, at Brighton. He is my sort of budget pick, um, but I'm happy to play him as part of a bench yeah. boost in 37. Um, yeah, um, obviously, I'm not, I probably won't settle on this. Um, I am tempted, instead of Fernandez, even though he's at home to Burnley, to, to take a, a, a one week punt on Brennan Johnson. And put Brennan Johnson yeah. in there instead of Fernandez, and then with game week thirty six or thirty seven in mind, getting Fernandez back again. Um, I've got three point three in the bank, um, so in two moves, possibly with a hit or possibly not. In game week thirty eight, I could get Salah back. So by having Fernandez instead of say Garnacho, um, and I've got three point three in the bank, so that brings me up to about eleven or twelve, which is, leaves me about one or two million short of getting. Salah back in 38 if I want him but I can't see me getting Salah for 35 36 or 37 I'm not going to captain him over that period no. um and uh, well just looking at Liverpool's uh fixture in yeah game week 35 he's away at West Ham which is okay but to be yeah, honest game week 35 I would probably be looking at well Fernandez um no, game week 36. Sorry, game week 36. I'll start again. So game week 36, uh, Liverpool are at home to Tottenham. Tottenham. Which is okay, yep. but it's not captain mm. okay. Meanwhile, Newcastle yeah. away to Burnley. That could be interesting. And, of course, Man City at home to Wolves. Home I think. Wolves. So it's going to be Haaland would be my captain and, then. And, and Palmer at home to West Ham. Well, so, there we go. Um, so I've already got yeah, better options. options. Um, yeah. And then game week 37, he's uh, Liverpool. No, you're not captain him then. No, so, yeah. no. And then game week 37, Liverpool have one game. It's against Villa away. Yeah, you'll go, go with a doubler. So yeah. the only so. time I'm going to want to consider Salah is Wolves at home in 38. And to be honest, yeah. uh, Bruno Fernandes away to Brighton possibly is a better fixture for um, considering Fernandez's annoying habit of scoring at Brighton. Um, and if I did well, want Liverpool, I might go for someone like Diaz. We'll get leaks and things and around mm-hmm. then. Um, well, I don't know. You yeah, got, that, you got yeah. pa- 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 Palmer at home to Bournemouth in 38. Job done. Palmer every week. Uh, to be of, honest, so. yeah, you're right again there. So I probably... I, <laughs> Salah's not necessary. So he's, he's a sort of an issue... But it's a, a challenge that wildcarders will face. And also those just using yeah. transfers for them. But it, it it's more it's it's more the fact of planning for a bench boost. So okay, I've got Foden and Gravardio away to Nottingham Forest on the bench. Um so if I don't have them on the bench, who goes on the bench? It's just you know, I, what, do I bench Fernandez? Or or yeah. Son who's got a double or Gordon at home to Sheffield United? There's there's no, no one else I think, there. Um, I think we've all just got to prepare ourselves for bench points yeah. when we with this, and you've just got to get, you've just got to say this will happen. Yeah. Um, but it's all part of the bigger plan, and th- yeah. we're going to need these players in 37. Um, and it's just the, you just got to kind of it's part and parcel of building a bench boost squad, isn't it? We've done it many yeah. times before, yeah. and um, and that and, and it's Certainly. the sign of a good squad. Sign yeah. Of a so good squad, in isn't game it? week 36, um, I'd probably bench. Jackson at home to West Ham over Foden. Yeah. Uh, Foden yeah, is at definitely. home to Wolves. So I think, so there we go. So that's that problem solved. I've got Foden back in. Um, but I am just totally resigned to missing out on those Man City points. It can be annoying. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah um, I think I'm right in saying they go, they might have a Euro- European mm-hmm. semi final after that Forest game. Yeah. So if they're playing on, say, the Tuesday, I don't quite know how the schedule will fall, but if they're playing on the Tuesday yeah. or something like that, then that might give you a bit more confidence then to think, well, we might get a few managed yeah. minutes here, so I'm okay with the, putting them yeah. on the bench. Um, but yeah, I just think it's, it's just the way it's going to go. We're all going to want City players because yeah. 
of that double in 37, but players from Chelsea and Spurs are going to take priority in 35 because yeah. they play twice. I also think for that Fernandez slot, um, for instance, if Richarlison's back, yeah. he might be another yeah. alternative to, to yeah. Johnson. Um, and you would, you would put him in if he was yeah. fit and he was playing and leading yeah. the line for Spurs. So, um, yeah, I, I think, and I think Salah, look, nobody wants to sell him, mm. but um I think it makes sense on a 35 wild card. Yeah. I think if you're looking at fixtures, captaincy, you throw yeah. that all in the pot, then yeah. he's, he's not in the best five midfielders to own um, if you plan on a bench boost. So um, Yeah, so I used uh, planfpl.com uh, for this. Uh, do check them out. Um, and uh, it's really good to obviously plan these things. I've got a whole bunch of drafts for all sorts of things. Some of them for videos and things. So I've got a free hit for 34 draft. I'm not free hitting, but you know, just for the, for the yeah. content. And, uh, but this is actually, I'm finding this really useful. So I've got a whole bunch of these yeah. 35 drafts. Um, Same. It, there was, there, there was the good thing about it is there was a lot of things that are easy. You want Palmer. You probably want a bit of Spurs. Son. You're going to want Man City. You're going to want Foden, Haaland in there. Um, so there's there's various. You're going to probably want Gabriel still, even though he doesn't double in 37. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think there's a few things that are sort of easy for me. But yeah, there was a few things up in the air. Uh, another thought I had, uh, if I decide to play Foden and not get Brennan Johnson in, um, is instead of Fernandez, it's just bench Fernandez at home, Burnley at home. So prepare for points there, devil you know. Um, and I, I know Foden can really punish me. Um, yeah. But yeah. Well, he has with me, has with me this season but, a lot. But um, yeah, you could you could always play. I mean, actually, no, I don't think you can. I was going to say you could play him instead of one of the Newcastle boys, but home against Sheffield United, given what Newcastle no. Gordon's like at home, no. where he just returns every game. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't do that. I don't think. No, I don't think so. Um, the I, I only hope there's some rotation and Harlan misses out. Yeah. And Foden will come in immediately, or Foden yeah. misses out entirely. We got that right, but yeah. Um, so it's interesting. Game week thirty four, though. Um, obviously, uh, that that is is the main topic. It's just for me personally. I'm I'm sort of pretty much decided my move, so I haven't really got much more to think about for thirty four. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, hopefully our game, our thoughts on game week thirty four have helped you, whether you're free hitting or not. Um, do check out a lot of our other videos and podcasts. We've got lots about free hitting, lots about the double. Um, and I hope this uh, Game Week 35 early draft um, will set the tone for the, some of the content for next week. It's going to be a lot of decisions. So this you're going to be seeing a lot of this sort of draft next week. Um, so a little preview there. Um, thanks a lot for your time. Do remember to press that like button. Do remember to subscribe. Uh, Tom, good luck with the Game Week and thanks a lot for joining me. Thanks, Joe.